what is your background in art? How did you, how did the art bug, uh, you know, catch you to start? Well, I, well, I remember uh, going to school um, in Chicago. I was probably in the first grade. It was a kid in the class. He brought a, a, a drawing he did uh, from a newspaper, movie part of a newspaper. It was a picture of a, of a James Bond image called um, a Goldfinger. And I thought, wow, that kid is so good. You know, I want to draw like I want to draw like him. And so, you know, I began to try to draw a little bit more. And um, of course, you know, um, things happen in life. You know, you know, my mom remarried, and my uh, stepdad, who I call my my second father, he was an amazing artist. I mean, when he was dating my mom, he would come by in in Chicago in his Shelby Cobra. GT500 and pick her up. And before he'd leave, he would draw with me. He would sketch. And I wanted to have hands shaped just like him. And so um, when they married, you know, uh, I kept drawing. I was drawing cartoon characters and racing cars. And then uh, gradually I began to uh, draw animals. And he was always encouraging me. And by the time I got in middle school, I was the artist of the class. Uh, all through school, fast forward, uh, went to live in Chicago with my dad, biological dad in Chicago, went to a vocational high school at that time where you had to pick a major along with your academic classes. So while uh, some folks chose uh, electronics, uh, accounting, banking, uh, automotive uh, technology, I picked commercial art. So for, it was a longer school day, because I still had to take all the math and science and, and literature classes. So it, it was a longer school day, but I was learning how to do commercial art, which is um, pen and ink drawing, watercolor, uh, acrylic, airbrush, uh, printmaking from uh, silk screen to etching to woodcuts. So by the time I was done uh, in high school in Chicago, I was really uh, more uh, proficient and the different ways of, of, of making art. So got to college, took some classes, took more classes, took a lot of independent study classes. And uh, by the time I was really, really sure as far as what I wanted to do with my, my art, I wanted to really become proficient at the figure. Portraits, you know, drawing, drawing faces and hands. Um, and so, um, that's in my 20s, uh, 30s. Uh, I began to become tied to the Los Angeles uh, Black Arts community, where I met uh, John Otterbridge, uh, who really was a uh, part of the Black Arts movement in Los Angeles with the uh, assemblage artists, you know, who basically assemblage is, is piecing together or assembling found objects into a three-dimensional uh, piece of work. And so when I went to uh, Otto Bridges' house, um, I was challenged to try to express the figure, you know, jazz things, any idea in a three-dimensional format with more uh, collage. And so uh, that began to have a, a shift in my work like around that time, I read the autobiography of Malcolm X, um, you know, uh, had already read that. And so I began to really, um, uh, really try to e express art with more social commentary, uh, with the influence of my background, which was uh, comic books when I was growing up, you know, uh, and, and also just what I was taking in, in school, uh, classes I was taking. I had, I had joined a couple of uh, study groups. Uh, one of them was a, a study group uh, that dealt with uh, uh, Marxism, which was a, a critique of uh, capitalism. And so I was looking at the world a different way, uh, social and um, economically, and how that was impacting um, the Black community. Uh, but also I joined another reading group on uh, Pan-Africanism. And so I was looking at like a lot of uh, 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 critiques of, of society uh, are from a 
Pan-Africanist perspective. And that was impacting my art. And so I was really becoming uh, really more uh, invested in, in trying to really uh, express uh, a portion of my work uh, uh, to uh, challenge, um, question, and, and really uh, offer um, uh, some ideas uh, to uh, Black folk in particular. Around that time, I uh, began to really have an interest in, in, in African American art history. And so I uh, began to become curious about the uh, arts collectives, because I was a part of an arts collective in Los Angeles uh, called the LA Collective. Uh, and so I learned about the Afro-Cobra Art Movement, which stands for the African Commune of Bad Relevant Artists. Uh, and I began to, to, to contact uh, those folk. One is here uh, now in the Zoom meeting. His name was Wasworth Gerald. He was a founding member of Afro-Cobra. And, 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 uh, and so, uh, you know, he really has been a mentor in my life uh, in many ways. Um, and, and also my, my, uh, my writing in art uh, was also impacted by like another mentor uh, who was here in the Zoom meeting. Her name is uh, Dr. Melanie Herzog. You know, she's a art historian uh, and is uh, teaching a, um, she did like uh, amazing research on uh, Elizabeth Catlett. And so I've been knowing her since probably like almost 20 years. Uh, uh, because I was uh, really impacted by black women artists, uh, especially. And so her work on Cat Lett was an influence and her discipline in writing challenged me to not just make art, but write about art, write about it, you know? Um, and so it's been a, a synthesis of making art, writing about it, uh, about it and being really invested in, in, uh, in the, in the black aesthetic. Uh, so this piece was probably the last piece that I did where I was really, really moving, where, where I had really got as proficient as I wanted to be in doing portraits. Uh, it's also um, where I was learning about the Black Panther Party. So it's a picture of Bobby Seale, co-founder of the Black Panther Party. Uh, and uh, I chose red paper, red pastel paper, and I used uh, charcoal with a uh, white uh, pencil for highlights. It's about 19 by 26 in size. So a, how old is the image? Uh, 95. And since you felt like that was sort of like your the peak of how you were, how you making them? Um, it just depends on what I'm working in. Like if I'm working in uh, paint. It's much more of I'm I'm suggesting uh, with uh, gestures and everything, you know, and, and, and marks. But again, a picture of Malcolm X. Again, I'm really uh, trying to abstract the uh, face a little bit right here. Mixed media. And you can tell you're you're taking it a little bit uh, in a different direction, taking things a little bit further with a portrait. Yeah, I am. Yes. Okay, here, oil again. Uh, very apt, very uh, su suggesting. That was done with a dish rag. Uh, a person was set, sat in a chair in, in, in a class. A spotlight was put on their face and we were told to rub out all the highlights. So that was done in about a half an hour. Right there. Yeah. Here, okay. Uh, again, you know, I'm, I'm really um, playing with paint and uh, collage again you know and i'm really look looking at the impact of the statue of liberty and what that means to people who were oppressed and marginalized okay they come here for like a new way of life and they really get hit with a lot of challenges this is a so what does the statue of liberty feel like to to a person you know you know who's been who's been, um, you know, killed by the police, you know, you know, knee on her neck and kill, you know? Well, uh, this expresses that sentiment of, 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 of uh, 
frustration, anger of what Statue of Liberty means to uh, uh, an oppressed group. Uh, and so I found a picture of a Sports Illustrated magazine. Okay. And the cover of it was a pit bull with his fangs out. And it said, beware of this dog. Yeah. So again. That, that seems kind of weird for a Sports Illustrated. Yeah, it, it was uh, actually it was back in the time where pit bulls were getting a bad rap because they were uh, mauling and killing kids, you know. And so again, you know, so I'm just kind of playing on the idea of you of you have to beware of this image right here. So is is uh, is like all the text and imagery sort of in the background there? Is that all from the sports Sports Illustrated cover? It is, yeah. Okay. 